Hi guys, welcome back to Jungle Flowers Canada. So guys, as the title suggests, I had a very disappointing delivery from Thailand last night. I actually am remaking the video because I was so upset last night. I thought, you know what, I didn't want to put, put it out there until I had time to think about it and time to reflect on it. So I will be inserting the part of the video where I opened the plants and where I opened the box. But um, I'm going to show you afterwards what I'm going to do with the plants, how the roots look, and I'll let you know where I stand at the moment in communications with Asian Plant Exports and Peter, who is the owner. So I'll just give you a little bit of background history. So I, or I had ordered plants from Peter in March and things did not, um, obviously with, with COVID and everything, um, some plants didn't arrive and I had cancelled some plants and sent a, a revised order which I had notified them by email on probably three occasions and the wrong plants were sent. So I wrote back to Peter and said, listen, you know, I, um, I want the plants replaced and I also had ordered some new plants. So I reordered actually the plants that I had ordered in exchange and I had added two extra which I really liked which was the Monstera Dubia and the Anthurium uh, Forgetii I think it's called. I'll just confirm that if I got the name wrong. So they were shipped out on the 25th of July guys. Now I had requested that they go courier. There was enough money there to pay for courier and I had inquired about it and I had explained to Peter and to Wendy that Canada Post is not reliable at the moment. Um, in fact, it's very unreliable due to COVID. So I had specifically requested that they not be sent through the post system. And Peter had said, oh, we don't use the, um, the post when we're sending to Canada. Something about, um, I, I'm, I, I can't remember. I, I, he, basically, he alluded to the fact that they wouldn't be sent by post. So I got my tracking email on the 25th of July and it had EMS, which is Thailand Post. So I, um, emailed him back but I didn't actually get a reply and oh no I emailed back and said I had that there's no update I've heard nothing and he said that that's can be normal and sometimes here in Canada they don't update the um, the system when the plants arrive so today is August the 11th and the plants arrived August 10th so that was 13 days so to add insult to injury, Canada Post didn't bring them to my door, they put them in my mailbox. You know the communal mailboxes that we have? So it was put there. So um, that was very annoying. So I had seen the update and it was like, phone my husband, have they come, have they come? He said, no, nothing's come yet. I'm like, oh, but the update, and I said, oh, maybe it means it's out for delivery. You know, it was very hard to actually identify what was going on. So so then I thought, well, maybe I'm just going to check the mailbox just in case. And sure enough, the plants were there. So that was very irritating as well. So I got this tiny little box. I'll actually, I have the box here. I'll actually show you the size of the box. And I had ordered eight plants. And this was the size of the box. And of course, I'm thinking to myself, well, that's very small. Either they have done incredible packaging or, but I had my suspicions when I saw the pack. So of course, as you'll see in the video, the first two plants were dead and it turned out there was only five plants. I actually say when I'm opening it that there was only four because I think I was just so upset I couldn't see, you know, the wood for the trees as they say. Um, but it actually was five plants and two were dead. Now I'm going to put into the video the opening of the plants and you will see my reaction and you will see my disappointment. So here we have a Hoya Australis. Hoya acuta variegatus. That may survive. Hoya carry splash. That I think is okay. Hoya carry splash is okay. This is a Hoya, another Hoya Australis. 
that. Eskimo silver, I have one of these already. So two out of four plants arrived, the rest are dead. Okay, so I ordered a Hoya Parasitica large and that was $9, that didn't come. I ordered a Hoya Lacunosa silver leaves, that came. I ordered the Hoya Acuta variegata, that arrived. I ordered the Hoya Astralis Albo Marginata, that arrived but it was dead. I ordered the Hoya Astralis variegata, that was dead and I ordered the Hoya Breviolata Splash, but they actually sent me a Hoya Kerry Splash. Now, possibly it's the same plant, I don't know. I ordered the Monstera Dubia, it didn't come. The Anthurium Forgetii X Crystallinum Small. So in total, the plants came to $89.05. And from what, what I was owed, there was a balance, oops, sorry, of $91.80, which I, left to cover the cost of the courier and the cost of the phyto certificate. Okay, so I took them out of the packaging and I put them in water just to perk them up and um, I'm now actually going to put them in damp sphagnum moss. So the first plant is the Hoya Lacunosa Silver Leaves. So I'll just show it to you here. Here it is, you can see the roots there. Not a huge amount of roots and this Quite a small little cutting but I did get one of these before and the cutting and I knew the cutting would be small there it is compared to my finger it's about the length of my finger so the next one is the Hoya Acuta variegata there it is you can see you know it's rooted I wouldn't say there was a huge amount of roots on it and there is one leaf that is rotting this other leaf seems to be okay okay so again you can see the size of it there. So this is the Hoya Kerii Splash, which I had ordered the Breviata, but as I say, it might be the same one. And this, there's the roots on that. So this one's actually, looks like it's quite hardy. Um, that one seemed to have traveled well. The other two, as I say, were just complete mush. So first and foremost, let's pop them up in some sphagnum and then I'll let you know what's happening with regards to the delivery. Okay guys, I'm not sure what happened there. I think I might not have been videoing. So I will show you what I did with the sphagnum moss on the next one. So I'm taking the Hoya Acuta Variegata. I'm just gonna leave that leaf on it for the moment. I'm not gonna take it off. And I'm going to sit it on top of the damp sphagnum moss. And this has been well squeezed. I'm going to pack the sphagnum moss around it. or sphagnum moss, I think people pronounce it. <laughs> okay, take that long piece out. So I'm just going to let it sit in here for a couple of days and watch it and see what happens. Now, what I, I think I wasn't recording on the last one is that you take your wet, so this I soaked this sphagnum moss in water and you have to take it and squeeze it tight. Get as much water as you can out of it, guys. You just want it to be damp, okay? Okay, so now I'm going to put some of this in here. I'm going to push it in here. This is going to be for the carry eye. Okay, I need to go get some more, guys. I'll be back in a moment. So now I'm just going to take my Hoya Kerii and I'm going to sit it on top of the sphagnum moss here. And then I'm just going to squeeze out some more of this. Really well, guys. And I'm just going to pop that around the roots. And I'm going to leave them like this for maybe a week or two, just so they can acclimate to their new environment. And I was going to put these in Lekka, 
but I want to make sure that they're nice and healthy before I begin because it'll be my first time using Lekka. So there we have our Hoya Kerry Eye Splash in Sphagnum Moss. So here's our Hoya Lacanosa Eskimo. And this is actually squeezed already, so let's push that down there. And oops, put that in there. And it's so short. So let's stem with root on it. Okay guys, so there's the Hoya Lacunosa silver leaves. Now I actually have one of these that I bought last year and it's a very, very slow grower. I have had very little, in fact, I've watched it and wondered was it dying. So it, it hasn't, it isn't dead, but it's one that doesn't grow very fast, at least it hasn't for me. I have it probably a year and a half. Okay guys, so there they are, in sitting in sphagnum not moss and we will check back on them. Let's see how they're doing. Okay guys, so what recourse did I have? So I sent an email to Peter telling him I was very disappointed and that I had only received five of my eight plants and two of them were dead and that I had, I recapped the order I had given him and how much money was due to me and how I had left enough money for a courier and for the phyto certificate and I needed to know what was going on. Now, in this order, it came with the FIGO certificate. And it's the original, do I have my, it's the original. And funnily enough, this is the first one I've ever actually received in a box, but funnily enough, somebody had written to me on my last video and said to me, I didn't see a FIGO certificate in the box. I've ordered and I haven't received a FIGO certificate either. So this got me thinking and I'm like, okay, what's this all about? So I asked Peter. Now I think his answer is plausible, so I'm going to read it to you. And um, just to clear this up for anybody who may have the same question or may have noticed the same thing. So I wrote, so basically I wrote to him and asked him what he was going to do about it and he emailed me back. Now remember guys, um, they're on a different time zone to us. So when we're sleeping, they're up and vice versa. So I wrote to him last night and he did reply to me but he it would probably just be morning now, so he's probably just getting into work. So, anyway, I sent him the email and I wrote, like, so disappointed, and he wrote back, Grania, we will we'll check this internally and we'll solve your problem. So he's offering to solve the problem, let's see. But it's now tiring, guys, like, this is third time's a charm, you know what I mean? I'm, you know, I, anyway, let's, I don't want to get upset about it, but, his answer to the question about the FITO certificate, just for your information, is the FITO was issued, but since we all have imported over our agents in London, Miami and Vancouver, we have to handle them, handle them over to Customs there. So they have to hand them over to Customs there. So what obviously happens is the plants arrive in Vancouver, and that is actually true because I know my last plants were in Vancouver when I was tracking them. So basically the agents, when they arrive in Vancouver for us, submit the FITO certificates to customs and that's why they're not in the box when they arrive because this came by by post it didn't have that opportunity to go through an agent our agent clears all the packages for the eu us canada zones taxes handling vat etc and from there on the package travels in the free trade the free trading zone of eu us and canada if the FITO keeps attached to the box, then your customs have the right to charge you again for handling clearance and VAT. So to avoid this, they remove it after clearance in London, Miami and Vancouver. So I think that's very plausible. So for anybody who, el anyone else who might have been wondering about the FITO certificate and why it wasn't in my last box or in any of my previous boxes, that explains to you why. So they have an agent who handles it. And I actually used to be a customs rater myself. Um, long ago when I first came to Canada in the 80s so I was in Canada in the 80s and then I moved back in the 90s and then came back to Canada again in 2012 so that does make sense so I hope that clears it up for those of you who have those questions so I haven't heard anything back I'm waiting to hear from him I'm waiting to see what he's going to do about it um, but it doesn't take away from my disappointment guys 
um, like this will be the third time. This is the second time and some of those that I had ordered the first time that weren't in that order have come but as we know two of them have died but then I added extra plants onto it because I had some more money and they haven't arrived now. It doesn't come without its challenges guys. It really doesn't come without its challenges. So I would say to you if you're a person that can't handle the stress of this you probably shouldn't do it. Um, we're communicating with somebody in another country. Now, Peter does speak English. His English is very good. He is, I think he's Dutch maybe, but, um, but somewhere along the way, communication gets lost. And even though you send email, now, again, I'm not, I'm not making excuses, but I know they probably get thousands of orders in like from all over the world. So it's not like it's a small little company that gets 10 orders a week. They do get lots of orders and I'm sure keeping on top of everything is, is difficult. However, this could be smoother. This could work better. There are improvements to be made. This is, this is becoming laborious for me. I'm now looking at a third delivery. Am I going to have the same anxiety waiting for it to come? Is it stuck in Canada Post? Is it stuck at the airport? Where is my Where are my plants, I should say? So um, I'm just cautioning everybody. I'm just cautioning you that it's not for the faint hearted. It's also expensive to do this. So there's all, you always run the risk of losing money. So I just wanted to be candid with you. I wanted to let you all know exactly what happened. Um, I will let you know how this was resolved, hopefully before I publish the video. And um, but it, it is making me a little more reluctant to do this as much as I love to get the plants from Thailand. But to be fair, the cuttings are getting smaller, the roots are getting smaller. You know, the value for money, I think I'm, we're losing the value for money on this. It's not as worth it for me now when I see these tiny little cuttings, like with tiny little root systems. So this was $7.50 US, which is just about $10. Add on the shipping, add on the FITO certificate. Realistically, this probably came in 20, 20 plus dollars. So we're now coming to a point where these are really not worth it. Like, is that worth $20? No, it's not. So the cuttings are getting smaller. The hazards of shipping are becoming greater. The exchange rate is terrible. The shipping is expensive. So it's making me reconsider whether or not I will actually do this again. Unless it's for something really special, like a Monstera and Thai Constellation or something like that that's, you know, really worth having in your arsenal, as they, you know what I mean, that's really worth getting. So guys, all things considered, it's, it's becoming less worthwhile doing this. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't very upbeat. It's probably very somber. You can see I'm not as excited as I have been in the past by plants, but I want you to be informed. And I hope you can now make more informed decisions when considering importing. Uh, I think the biggest thing to, to take into consideration is you need to add, as I said before, you need to add the cost of shipping, the cost of the FIDO onto your order and then try and um, equate it across all your plants and decide, is this really worth it? So guys, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please don't forget to ask below. And if you give me a thumbs up, that would be amazing. And of course, I will ask you as usual, if you could subscribe. So guys, I am going to see how these guys do. And if they recover, I will try them in Lekka. So stay tuned for that video. Okay guys, thank you for joining me.